The biggest problem that you run into with table saws is getting a really bad tear out on the other side after you've cut something. You could have the sharpest blade and you're still gonna have the same problem with tear out. It's just part of woodworking. For about 10 to 12 years, I've been using this insert, but I wanna get a zero clearance insert so that I get better cuts. So I will be making this today. The method I'm gonna to use to make this is a little bit different than others as I don't cut through the bottom of the insert, but this really helps out if you have a riving knife. I think that this is an easier way. If you don't have a riving knife like me, then I'll show you how to add a splitter, but it's completely optional if you do have a riving knife. Let's go. To get started, I'm gonna go ahead and take my insert out and you're going to want to use a material that's the same thickness, obviously. This Baltic birch plywood that I've got is just slightly thicker than my insert. So I think what I'm gonna do later on is I'm just gonna run it through my table saw and trim it away so that it's the right thickness. If you have a planer, that's a much better option altogether. Normally what people do when they make these is they go ahead and stick their old one on to their, their new plate that they're gonna cut. They trace around it and then they cut it out and then they go from there. But I'm gonna do it a little bit differently in this project and you'll see why in a little bit. With the insert out, I'm gonna go ahead and set my fence so that it's right on the edge of my insert here. It really needs to be exactly on that line. If you find that your fence is out of alignment, I've got a tip that I'll share on the website that will show you how to put it in alignment. And that feels pretty good right there. Now I'll take the plywood that I plan on using for the insert. I'm gonna line it up to the very end here. I'll use a machinist square just to make sure that I am on that end. Now I'm gonna raise this as high as the blade will go. I'll take my square again and then I'll put it on this side, find where that tooth juts out. So right there. And I'll draw a line so I know later on where to stop. Now I'll go ahead and take the insert and I'm going to move this over. I want that to be line up right on that edge. I'll add my insert again and I'm gonna go ahead and cut a strip off. If I go ahead and put this in here, it looks like it works. So that's good. The next thing that I'll do is put my old one on here and now I'm gonna outline it. Now I'm gonna take my fence again and I wanna put it right on the edge once again. Now when I cut, I'll be making my new cut line in this plywood. We'll go ahead and add the insert back and I'll cut up until I get to that line. I'm just gonna go ahead and sketch it across. I'll stop when I get there. Now obviously at this point, you're gonna to want to add something that will fill that gap. What's nice about this is you don't have to take off your riving knife to do this. Uh, you do have to add that piece later on, which isn't really a problem, I don't think. For somebody like me that doesn't have a riving knife, I'm going to use a piece of steel on the end to act as a splitter. I've got a piece of 12 gauge steel here, which just happens to be the exact thickness of my blade, which is a 3 seconds inch blade but I obviously don't want to cut into that steel splitter later on. So I'm gonna raise my blade as high as it goes and I'm gonna see where I need to put this. You could always find a 12 gauge that is aluminum, but this is what I've got. So that looks like it's right on the line. This is where my blade comes up right there. So I'll go ahead and just make a little line right here. Obviously there is going to be a little bit more below the table. So I don't want to put my splitter all the way up to that line. I'm just gonna come back right about there. Now I'll take this over to the bandsaw and I'm gonna go ahead and cut this to shape. Now like my last one, I added a hole, obviously for my finger so that I can get it out. When I go to put this in, it's a little tight still and I don't wanna force it down because I still have to take care of that side. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut a piece off that will fit in that side. I've got an inch of plate steel here and I want to cut it so that my bottom's going to have the cut marks on it. I really want this to be square and not have to worry about those cuts. Now here's my plate that I just cut and most of this plate steel, if you feel it, usually has one side that's kind of rounded over and the other side that's cut. And the way this works, at least what I've seen, is that they put these in a giant machine and then they just shear off one side. 
So you get the one side that's round and then the other side where it's kind of pushed across. And while I obviously don't want to sand off a whole lot that would make this useless, I do want to find that edge and just clean it up a little bit. I'm just gonna get that edge. Now, my piece goes in like this. I've got the rounded side here that's gonna be facing the fence. I really wanna make sure that the other side, that there's not gonna be any kind of problem with running the board through it. I don't want it to catch, which could obviously be very dangerous. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark this right here. That's the edge that I want to round over because I will get this mixed up later on. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side, just the hair. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and do the back side just a little bit, at least the side with that sharp edge on it. And there we go. If I zoom in, you can see that it's got that little splitter on it. So I don't forget which side is which, this side is gonna go down. Now I'm just gonna mix a little bit of two-part epoxy together, just add a little bit to the bottom. Obviously, if you put too much on or it goes above the surface, it will catch. So be really careful and mindful of that. I'm gonna slide this in so that if anything squeezes out, it's gonna go on the back instead of pushing this down and having it come up. I'm gonna go up to that mark. Okay, with that in there, I wanna make sure that my surfaces don't open up a little bit. Like that, I think I'm just gonna leave it like this. And this is overkill, but I really wanna make sure that that doesn't close up even a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of epoxy in the back, why not? We'll come back when that's cured. Now it does seem to fit pretty good in here, but I'm catching just a little bit on the edge. So I'm gonna come around here and just trace it. And it just looks like it's gonna be on this side. I'll give it a little bit of a sanding and we'll come back. And we're back. That fits in there really well. No movement, looks good, let's turn it on. Now, one thing that the old zero clearance fence had was this little tab that fits in the back. The insert that came with the saw had the little tab, so I put a tab on mine. Of course, I didn't build one into this, but if I really wanted to, I could just add a screw to the end. And that would work. And that worked pretty good. Now I know what you might be thinking, and that is that I did use the steel, and what can you use? You can take a couple shims and you can go one on each direction here. And where they meet, you'll just glue those together inside of the cut. Now obviously you don't wanna squeeze it together too much or you'll lose your zero clearance cut for the, your blade. But that's a really simple way if you don't want to cut a piece of stock that thin and glue it up that way. Anyway, that's it for this video. Zero clearance fences are great, I recommend them. I haven't had one in years, so this is gonna be great to use, but uh, let me know in the comments if this helped in any way, and let me know if this is something that you might make yourself.